Our next guest doesn't think there's much he can do to stop it. He writes this morning that despite Powell chiming in on fiscal policy during the pandemic, commentary now may just make unwanted enemies. Joining us this morning, Wall Street Journal's chief economics commentator, Greg Epp. It's a great snapshot, Greg, at how his stance and rhetoric surrounding uh, this has changed over time. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of an asymmetry there, Carl, right? I mean, like in the in the uh, 2020, we had the pandemic, and yes, the economy was in a very dire strait. And Powell was quite vocal saying, yeah, we need more stimulus. We need to help people out. And I get where that's coming from. It, it, the economy was in a bad shape, and the Fed had done, done all it could do. It had lowered rates to zero, so fiscal policy was the only game in town. But you could sort of argue, well, wouldn't symmetry require that once the deficit is becoming a threat in the other direction, that you say something? And apparently the answer is no. When Powell is asked about it, he says, we don't comment on fiscal policy. And is that the right thing? I know there are people like Larry Summers, like Paul Ryan, the former speaker, who would like him to speak out. But he has apparently concluded that there's probably no upside to him doing that. What is the downside? Well, I think he has tried since he became chairman to basically sort of like, I think his words are stay in our lane, essentially not comment on things that aren't having nothing to do with monetary policy. And look, as you know, we're in a very polarized time. And the risk is that if you take a position on controversial subjects, it comes back to bite you. You give cheer to those who agree with you, but you make enemies of those who disagree with you. And, you know, the truth is, like back in the early 1990s, George H. W. Bush, Bill Clinton, these were presidents who were ready to listen to advice and make some hard decisions. Congress wasn't as polarized as it is now. It's, it, those aren't the uh, times we live in now. I like to say that Congress uses the Fed chairman the way a drunk uses a lamppost, support rather than illumination. Yeah. I mean, the other risk, Greg, is, first of all, it is politicized, right? There are certain members, for instance, of the Republican Party that have taken a harder line against deficit spending than Democrats, and he doesn't want to get embroiled or lumped in with one of those sides. And the other is it's, it's not clear whether it's having an effect on the economy. I think back when he spoke out about the need for fiscal spending, it was, it was more to juice the economy. In, in this case, it might be having an impact on bond market and eventually may slow growth, but... Right now, it's not, it's not clear that that's what's happening. Absolutely. It's not like the deficit is a clear and present danger where the explanation and the solution are both fairly obvious. Uh, it, this is in Greece, right, where we're about to face total bankruptcy and economic cataclysm. And, you know, it's necessary for people like a central banker to speak out. There are a variety of you know, theories about why bond yields are going up. I happen to think the deficit's one of the, one of the reasons. A lot of people disagree. And then there's the sort of the counter, counterintuitive reality that as far as the Fed is concerned, because most of this rise in bond yields is in the form of the term premium, as opposed to investors thinking the Fed's going to tighten more, that higher term premium actually slows economic growth and makes the Fed less likely to raise interest rates. So you don't exactly want to go to Washington and say, oh, that deficit that I'm really worried about, it means we're like, less likely to raise interest rates. That's not a message you want to be telling Congress right now. And it also helps him because that's what he's trying to do is slow the economy enough to get inflation back to target, which has not fully happened yet. Yeah, but on the other hand, you know, what would really help him now would be a little bit of contractionary fiscal policy. I mean, uh, it is the mirror image of the period we had, you know, after the global financial crisis and during the pandemic, when monetary policy was doing all it could do, interest rates were at zero, the Fed was buying bonds, and it still wasn't enough to help the economy. That's when there was a role for fiscal policy. We're not in that world any longer. The Fed is doing all it can to get inflation down, which is too high, and a little bit of help from the fiscal authorities higher taxes, lower spending would actually, you know, give the Fed a valuable assist here and perhaps make higher interest rates less necessary.